so hi, my name is Adam. I work for Sensefly, which is a uh, part of the Parrot Group. It's the part of the Parrot Group that does drones for professionals. That's actually our logo, drones for professionals. And uh, I wanted to show you guys one thing today. It's a project we worked on uh, a couple weeks ago. We call it Mapping the Impossible, because it sounds fancy. Um, but it's a, it's a little bit of what we do with the EV drone and how we can uh, put together a really nice project. So it all started um, a few months ago. There should be a video that starts here. When, uh, when we were flying these EV drones in the wonderful, uh, above the wonderful village of Zermatt in Switzerland. And we were flying in formation. We did a few small little mappings and we thought, well, this is all nice, mapping these little villages, uh, flying around a bit. But the whole time we had this massive mountain behind us, the Matterhorn, which uh, some of you guys might know. Uh, here it is coming up again. There we go. It's famous for the Toblerone, if any of you guys have ever eaten that. So then we thought, well, this Toblerone mountain, why don't we just map that? And then we said, well, hold on a second. That's a really giant mountain. How do you map a giant mountain? So we asked ourselves this question. We started thinking. We started developing a bit of software that would help us. And we realized there's, there's two very key elements to this. In terms of techniques for mapping, it, when you map, one thing that you really want to do is be very close or always be at the same distance from a mountain. A mountain is not uh, something that's horizontal. It's very vertical. So we realized as a technique, to stay always at the same altitude, you want to be flying lines and taking images along the side of a face. As it's not a flat thing, we have to start doing a bit of stairs to start going down the face. Um, so that we're always at the same, uh, the same distance. That's for, uh, so we developed software for 3D model-based planning and visualization. So we can now use data sets that have elevation data and adjust the waypoints automatically when, uh, when we're in uneven terrain. We can also visualize afterwards in Google Earth to make sure you don't kind of crisscross a mountain and smash into it. The second thing that we realized was that if we want to, uh, there's a, there should be a video that starts there, but um, if we want to do a very giant area and you want to keep the same lighting, uh, uh, the same uh, weather and all that, you need to fly not just one, but many drones at the same time. The Matterhorn, the whole area is, uh, is 20, 25, 30 square kilometers. One drone just won't cut it. So again, we developed technology and techniques for flying multiple drones at the same time, synchronizing the drones and getting them from crashing into each other. So that was the first step. Once we had the tools and the techniques, there was the planning. How do you map a big mountain like that? Luckily in Switzerland, there's, uh, there's lots of huts everywhere, uh, including the Hornley hut, which is, uh, you can't quite see it, but that's thing in the, in the little red circle. Um, it's a hut at 3,200 meters which is about 1,500 below the summit of the mountain. And you have a nice view on two of the four faces of the mountain. So from there, we can launch the drone, we can land the drone, and, uh, and we can start doing these kind of steps. So this is the first flight. We fly straight up from the hut, go to the summit, do a couple lines on our way down, and then land again. We did that with one drone, two, three, ended up doing six flights with several drones at the same time. So we got a really nice coverage of the two sides. And um, so that's the north and the east face. And here you can see the west face. And this was, this was the sticky point where we thought, well, how do we reach that? You cannot see it from the hut. You cannot fly to it from the hut. If you see what it looks like in person, that's the west face right there. There's nothing around, it's hard to access, it's too high to fly from the bottom of the valley. So we realized the only real way to do that was to go to the top, launch the drone from the top, and then have it come down and land in the valley about 2,000 meters uh, lower. So that was the plan. All we had to do was get out there and do it. We split into uh, three teams. First team was at the hut. We had, uh, you can see uh, Andrea, our uh, head of marketing and sales, uh, who uh, decided to hike up with us to the hut with uh, three EB drones that they were uh, launching from there. Second team was climbing the mountain with EBs 
in the backpack. Third team was down in the valley ready to pick up the EB once it lands. Once the, so it all started around, uh, we started climbing at 4.30 in the morning. Then team two, once they were ready, they started launching drones. So here you can see a launch of an EB, um, fully autonomous flight after that, the Matterhorn just behind. Second drone up in the air, third drone up in the air, and they were doing that for a little while. In the meantime, team two, slowly reaching the summit, preparing some EB drones at the top, get them ready to fly. A quick little radio to the team at the ground, make sure they're ready to pick up the drone once it's down there. And then it was time to launch from the summit as well. So we weren't even quite sure this was gonna work at such an altitude, launching a drone at uh, 4,478 meters, that's about 16,000 feet for you Americans. Um, but it worked. We had a nice little takeoff. And then the drone went. L little iffy uh, at the beginning, but it flew. It flew really nicely. Did the landing at the bottom of the valley where Team 3 was ready to pick it up. Of course, Team 3 wasn't going to sit around waiting the whole time, so, well, first they waited for the drone to land in that very convenient bush that happened to be there. But then they were just going to sit around, so they did a few more mappings themselves. One there, one there, one there, one there, to cover the rest of the mountain. <coughs> Whole project took, uh, took a morning, took a few hours in the morning, a lot more time to plan, but uh, execution uh, ended up taking a few hours. 11 total flights, uh, almost six hours of flight time, 2,200 pictures, lots of distance, and lots of altitude. But we did manage to get a nice result at the end that we're pretty happy with. So here you can see. <laughs> a nice high density point cloud. This isn't a mesh, these aren't triangles, these are just points. There's 300 million of them, uh, but these are just points. Uh, average uh, resolution of about 20 centimeters on the mountain, that's average. Knowing that we, we even managed to get the whole Italian side without flying over Italy. Uh, just flying a little bit high up, we managed to cover the whole thing. So. That's what we have to present. There's a full video that uh, you can see on our uh, on this YouTube uh, on our channel. Um, and thanks to our partners, uh, Drone Adventures, who helped us with the logistics, Pix4D, that helped us to recreate the model, and uh, Mapbox, which uh, did a bit of work on making it available so you can see it online and play around with the model. Thank you very much.